everybody. Thank you so much for your subscription. Yes, it has been one of those roller coaster rides with all of this. Uh, I call it the pandemic because nobody really knows and it's very unknown. But what I do know is that we are here to be in our sovereignty. That means be yourself. And yoga for recovery is about you going inside and doing that exploration, that work, and seeing what comes up for you that you need to choose to. Hi, Gavin. Thanks. <laughs> so there's going to be some noises, people moving in and out. This is called my yoga studio space with kids at home. Yeah. Big breath in, letting go breath out. We have zero control of everybody else, but we do have control of our own selves. I've been lately going through some really turbulent uh, exposures of who I really am and some of those old paradigms and programs that I choose to compost, meaning looking at them with a loving heart and seeing where I can release that. And most often it's negative talk, most often negative talk. We've been taught and maybe haven't been led to uh, explore. So this is what this practice is about. It's about exploring not just your physical body. Yes, we do tap into this physical body. That's what this is all about. Yet in a deeper way, it's about yourself, your sovereignty and how you see yourself. Okay, so let's get started. This is a 45 minute or so practice. And um, I have included a kettlebell, kettlebell uh, weight, whatever you want to call it, and uh, a weight like some of you have been requesting, I'd like to add a little bit more resistance to it, the push and pull of yoga. Please be my guest. Whenever there is an opportunity, I will present that. For those who want to put a little bit more push and pull, meaning that including, um, say, the workout aspect of it, yoga is enough. It's mind-breath practice that includes the physical being. And yet, I'm open to you and all of your questions and suggestions. So bringing in some weights, you don't necessarily have to do that, especially if your posture and you're at the beginning, your posture isn't quite there yet, and you're at the beginning of your practice. So please learn from the cueing, roots of the hands, the feet, the hugging, and the expanding up. So let's begin with the big, beautiful, solid OM. OM is the universal sound of consciousness. It's love, and that's what we're all choosing, hopefully, to see within ourselves it's love so sitting up nice and tall however you wish to see it yourself make sure you do have all of your yoga stuff blanket blocks strap and if you need weights you'll understand and, and through this practice if you do or don't okay yoga bolster if you have one you open that and your attitude is everything the big ohm so sitting comfortably, nice and tall, align your spine, reach through the crowd, head root down through the sitting bones, open your arms up and say yes. Just say yes. Say yes to life. Then exhale your hands into your heart center and we'll take a couple of just checking in breaths, noticing how the breath is. Can you fill your lungs to their fullest capacity? And then from the diaphragm, exhale that breath out. And to the fullest of your capacity, breathe into the fullest of the lungs expanding the belly and exhaling that out. Just do a couple of those. Bring your hands together solidly so the fingers are touching. Thumbs at the sternum of your chest. Broaden the collarbone. Roll your shoulders back. Lift your sternum. And then let's just do a little trial. Big breath in and letting go breath out. Closing your eyes is an option. One big beautiful ohm. Deep breath in. into the space blinking your eyes open let us get started in the movement mindfully that the breath is again collarbone to lower ribs that's the size of your lungs they're huge fill them up to the fullest capacity and exhale with all of your energy out not every breath you'll understand when to do that most conscious thing is the exhale the universe breathes into organically it's the exhale so using either your blanket for your knees let's come into tabletop a simple tabletop to begin yoga for recovery isn't about judging your physical anatomy it's about feeling it and getting into the breath so bring your hands spaciously as wide as your yoga mat 
knit the belly button in towards the back of the spine so the spine is nice and smooth, neck is neutral. And then let's just play with extending the left leg out first of all, pressing through the balls of your feet, toe pads, and then hovering the right knee off the mat for five, for four, three, two, lower the right knee, lower the left knee, extend the right leg back, knit the belly button in, resist the floor, hover the left knee up off the floor for five, four, turn your elbow creases to face your index finger and thumb, press the floor away, knit that belly button in, lower the left knee, lower the right knee, I know I don't really count, don't get caught up in my counting, and then hover both knees up off the mat for five. Four. So you're really pressing the root of your index finger and thumb like lobster claws into the floor, creating such a cup with the hands, knees hover, lower the knees, plant or flex your feet, that means point them, open your knees nice and wide, rise up onto your shins, again if you need a blanket, make sure the blanket encompasses knees, ankles and toes, lengthen your tailbone down with a smile and an attitude that is like saying yes, we're going to lean back from the knee creases and press up into the shins, so you lean back, from the knees, so the whole spine stays neutral. So that means there's no wavering in the lower back and the neck. And you're literally toning in the belly and the neck and pressing down in your shins as the quads get really toned. Do that a couple more times. I like to in breath back and exhale up. Some of you like to do the opposite. If your knees are too widespread, bring them in. It should look a no shoving. It looks like a pyramid with your knees and your toes. You'll figure out what works best for you. I can only cue and suggest, and invitations are there, but it's up to you. So figuring out what you need, meet your needs. Some of you like to hold this posture for a couple of breaths. I'm putting my right hand behind my back to keep my lumbar spine neutral, tailbone down. I'm going to hold this for a couple of breaths, really feeling the energetics. Yeah, good. And then lower the hips down. Once again, come back up into tabletop. This time, we're going to explore through the right toes, right leg straight back, and then extend out through the left knee or through the left arm, and then take that left arm perpendicular to the shoulder joint, knit that belly button in, and then reach out through the left arm. So turning the elbow crease up towards the ceiling as well as the left palm, and then extending out through the right leg, through the balls of the foot, knitting that belly button in, keep your neck neutral and feeling that energy right there. And then we're gonna play with, we're gonna bend the left elbow and right knee together, squeeze in as tightly as you can, and then in breath it out. So the exhale brings it in, the in breath brings it out. I would not suggest doing weights in this one, holding a weight, especially with your arm inflection. You could cause a lot of shoulder damage. The bursa in the shoulder is not meant to be played with in ways that people do. So keep this light. Keep the tone of the belly. See how my lower back starts to dip. So lift that belly button in and just do a couple more. So about five to 10 of these. Some of you may want to go quicker or slower. I'm not going to judge. I'm here to just discern. And that's enough for me. I'm going to release my right hand and my left knee. Tone the belly button in. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Move through a little cat cow as I stir the tailbone down and tuck my forehead towards my pubis. That's an exit. The inhale's the opposite. So really playing in your breath. Ha, ah, yeah, there we go. Oh, I just cracked my back there. That often happens. <laughs> I just realized I didn't turn on my big lights, but that's okay. And choose not to judge and sit discern. I know a lot of you are talking about your belly flush. Oh my goodness, just let your belly flush be what it is, okay? Once you play through cat cow a little bit, we're going to extend up through the left leg, straight back, toes on the mat. Right arm comes out, and when you're ready, you're going to lift that right leg, or excuse me, that left leg through the inner thigh, knitting that belly button in, and then extending that right arm in flexion. If it will go in front of you, if not, turning the palm upward, or keep it more out perpendicular from the shoulder joint. So playing with this, we're going to bend and squeeze in and reach it back out, really toning the belly button. Noticing how many you did on that other side, make it complete for this side as well, mirroring it, really feeling it. So mentally put your mind into doing this. I know you're listening to my voice, but squeeze inflection, extend and extension, okay? So you're really playing with the lumbar spine here and the thoracic and of course the shoulders, the neck, which is part of the thoracic. And then there you go, exhale, knees, shins, stance 
back up onto the shins and knees, length of the tailbone. And then we're gonna lean back, really contracting those quads. So they're, they're fullest extension when we lean back, we're lengthening the muscles. And then we find that full length and then we press into the shins come up. Okay, so this is more of a contraction or a holding, like, a, uh, like when you're lengthening your muscles of your quads to their fullest length, only go that far to push up. You wanna have the full strength of your quads coming up. If you get what that is, if not, that's okay. You don't have to understand all my jargon. I can tend to talk a lot. A couple more of those. There we go. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You can take your time. And then finding the bottom to the heels. Once again, we're going to go on the knees. I'm going to face you though. And I do appreciate a blanket underneath my knees. Some of you have really hard floors. So make sure the blanket will span both knees hip distance apart. And this is where we're going to play in um, a little like side bend extension and eventually standing up and I'll show you when you can use the weights for that one. Extend the left leg out perpendicular to the shoulder joint, or the shoulder joint, the hip joint, shoulder too. And then just play on the heel in and out, internally rotating and externally rotating up in the femur bone right up here through the heel. Good, so you've got that range of motion. Make sure your right toes are behind you. That's your left leg I meant to say, right? I hope I did. Take your right hand down onto the floor, reassess the inner edge of the left foot, and make sure that your right arm is directly underneath the shoulder. Some of you may need a block, and make sure you root the base knuckles and hug that block into your hand and reach up through that left arm. So I'm gonna invite the left leg up, bending and extending it and noticing. Mm -hmm. So what we're focusing on is a lot of gluteal energy but as well as, well, hip flexors and extensors, all in this area, this hip area. So when you're pressing through the balls of your feet, you're also pressing the floor away with your right hand and opening up the left arm to open up your chest. Some of you may want to dance in grabbing your ankle and moving into a little bit of a, a back bend. That's awesome. You do you. We want to express the fullness of the body. Some of you may root the inner edge of the left foot and reach and lengthen that left side body. Okay, let's do this one together. Root your left foot down, reach up through the left arm, and then only flex it over the crown head if that arm is flexible there. If not here, 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 or over here. Your right foot will move inward towards the midline for like a kickstand to keep your balance. That's automatic. And then pick up that left leg, and we will grab a hold to our best ability, the left ankle, and then move back and resist. If that's not available to you, that's okay. Sometimes just grabbing your pant leg is a great option. Or just do what you can do, okay? So four more breaths here, just really feeling uh, the resistance of your left foot against your left hand to create a spacious back bend. Again, if that's not working for you today, then you just play for five, for four, three, two, and then knees to the mat, plank to flex your feet. Take a couple of belly breaths here. It's really important to slow down and be in your body. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've gone through quite a feat of uh, movement and uh, stuff in my head. Just know it's never too late to begin again. We're always at the beginning most often and also right foot out, left hand down, that you're not alone. And when you feel like a failure, it's the growth that we look for. When we feel like we failed, it's not that we failed. It's just that we're growing, we're discerning, we're learning what works for you. So again, you're playing through the right side, start to wake it up, press the floor away with the left hand, feel the movement. So again, this is about growing yourself. I've failed quite a bit, meaning growth. I've experimented. I realized that was like a dead end road. I realized so many things and I'm here now and I am most often, yes I am, very truthful because if I'm not, well, then I'm just a hack, okay? So yes, I've met some dead end roads and I found my way back to the beginning and never ever choose to give up. Instead, I choose to continue on. So play with your back bend. If that works for you, holding your foot so you're literally resisting your right hand against your ankle. All hands, feet, fingers, and toes are active. So pressing the floor away with the left hand. If this doesn't work for you today, you can always have the knee in or you can lay down there, bending and extending. Two more breaths, okay? Whoop. There we go. Good, and then 
exhale, slowly come down to sit on your shoes. Make sure, like I do have the blanket here, that's not really optimal, uh, covering my knees and my ankles, so I'm going to shift around a little bit. Open up your arms if you're okay to sit on your shins, if not, find another way to sit. The left hand underneath, right hand on top, Guinness grip. Pull isometrically on your hands with them directly over the crown of the head or slightly in front of your forehead or your face if that's better, depending on your flexion of your arms. Knit the belly button in so you're sitting up nice and tall and then pull those hands isometrically as if you're trying to pull them apart but they're locked in space for five. You can move your jaw and your neck around. You can make funny faces. Four, three. They pull hard there. Two, one. Good. And then integrate your hands behind your back. So seated on your shins is uncomfortable. You can always lift your bum and put a block between your ankles and sit on that. This is known as Virasana. Because now we're going to interlace the fingers behind the back. And I'm just going to give you a back uh, view of that, of my bootie. So block between, if that feels better for you. Yoga strap is handy. Notice how I have everything within arm's reach. So the integration of the fingers is important. The habitual way, then you draw the inner elbows in, shoulder blades down the spine, knit the belly button in, heel the hands, point index finger, and keeping your elbows bent as you lengthen your neck. So this is really a hard one for most human beings to do. So I gravitate towards peace fingers, middle and index finger, hold the yoga strap, then make a fist no wider than your shoulders, and then pull it taut. You can bend your elbows up towards the sky, squeeze your shoulder blades together, back of the neck as well, and then pulling that strap as if you want to pull it apart for another 10. So we're really integrating the back muscles between the shoulder blades and opening up the chest. So a lot of people are uncomfortable in this stretch, so that's why you know you can use your yoga strap, pull it taut for another three, two, good. And then release that strap, come up off your heels. I'm just going to face you once again. And then this time, sitting on your shin still, but rising up onto your toes. So curl those toes under, yeah. And then we're going to stand on the knees, extend that left leg back out, play around on the heel, root the right hand down. Again, you can use the block. And then this time we're going to open up that chest of yours and play in tapping and bending the left knee up, but tapping it behind you, if it will go, and my right leg's like a kickstand, and then bringing it in towards your chest. So up towards the sky, and then back behind you, and then you go back up towards the sky, in towards your chest. So literally creating a circumvention in the pelvis. You're playing in that pelvis of yours. Okay, so knee can go up, you can toe tap it down, left arm is balanced, and then bring it into your chest. You've got a couple more rounds, just really getting more into the pelvic area. And remember, wherever you are, you are. So really navigating yourself there, okay? Because now we're gonna take that left knee in towards your chest, bring it forward, come up onto your right finger pads, and take it forward and reassess that right knee so now you're facing the front of your mat, okay? So hopefully you have a big mat so you can just follow me through like that. Now, this is where the courage, the strength, the rooting down through the feet, your attitude line up through the crown head. You're going to press into your feet to rise up. Some of you need to choose to, at this time, stack your hands and press into your quad as I fall over. So make sure your feet are hip distance apart to press up, to lift that back right knee. Some of you are comfortable and able to rise up without leaning forward and press down and rise straight up. Okay, so once you come up, let's reestablish that right foot, and then that may mean I don't need this blanket actually. Reestablishing that back right leg and bending that right knee. Yes, get your footing, <laughs> and that happens all the time. So we're in a high lunge, literally, but we're going to play with the pelvic energy. Now, some of you may have weights, and that's been the request. So before you even rise up, equal weights on either side. You can hold your weights and you can rise up and then you can lower down. So make sure you're holding equal weights, all right? So for me, I don't have that, I only have one. So you can hold your blocks and rise up, but we're just hovering the back right knee and not necessary to have any added external stuff if you're just learning to get into this mode right here. So you're on the back right heel. Everybody motorcycle that right heel up like you're in a 
motorcycle grip, vroom, vroom, vroom. And then reach up and open up that chest. So if you happen to have weights, you'll just be holding them here. And open up that chest. Open up for five, for four. If you're reaching your arms, that's three, for two. Good, and we're gonna twist it. So now you're gonna twist towards that left leg. And as you twist, you're gonna bend the back right knee so you can keep structurally your chest straight up. And then open up your arms and then reach as far back with that left arm as you reach the right arm, opening up your hands if you're wearing catcher's mitts. And then opening up that whole right side of your rib cage. Yeah, with the stomach and the spleen. And you're contracting, but still lengthening through the left side. Yeah, the liver, the gallbladder. Yeah. And then inhale, come back to center. Exhale, touch down. Come up onto your finger pads and step back into a downward facing top dog. So come up onto your finger pads. You can start to strengthen those wrists. Good. And then walk your feet back as much as you uh, feel you need to to come into a plank pose. Once you come into that plank pose, you can reestablish your hands in that rooted face knuckle position. And then from there, we're going to just shift back and forth through the heels, the toes, and the shoulders. Yeah, just like that. And then back into your downward facing dog by hinging at the hips and flexing at the shoulders. And playing that back and forth. So the in breath brings you to plank, knit the belly button in. The exhale brings you into down dog. So you're literally giving yourself movement from breath. So it's the breath that takes you. Blossom your bum. There we go. Lift the heels, bend the knees. a couple more some of you may want to do a lot more and remember this is yoga for recovery so it's creating a slow down more awareness and feeling it attitude as opposed to muscling up the ego and on your next in and out breath slowly lower the knees as your shoulders come directly over your wrists tuck your toes under sit back up onto your knees and your toes there you go okay and i'm going to rise up plantar flex my feet open my knees up Lengthen the tailbone down and take it back and up. So you're really finding those quads right there, the front of your legs, that is. So, yeah, it's one of those root to rise. You're pressing your shins down. You see my ankles are pretty infused into four. A lot of you have uh, feet that are stuck in this position in time. Don't push it. You may need to put a roll or roll up a blanket underneath your ankles. Then exhale, sit back down onto your heels. Bring your knees hip distance apart. And then I'm just going to turn to face you because we're going to move to the other side, right? So rising up onto your shins, right leg comes out, playing on the heel, feeling what that is in the pelvis, working it, working it. And then once again, your left hand comes down and your right leg comes up and your left leg will move around like a kickstand, depending on where you need that range of motion and playing with pressing through the balls of that foot. And again, we're gonna play bending knee up Toe tap back, bend knee up, bring it into your chest. So you literally are playing in the pelvis. It's a wobble board, literally. It, it's able to move in all kinds of directions. So just giving yourself that, oh, there it is, a little kinky spot there. Keeping your neck as neutral, so you don't want to drop the head. Keep it up, neutral. Good. And then from there, we're going to draw that knee into the chest. And I'm not going to turn that way, which you would take your right foot forward. Right? Or let's do that because otherwise you will get confused too. Take that right foot forward, swivel on that back left knee, and then voila, you're up. So I know this changes gears. Your stuff is over there. You got to grab it, yada, yada, yada. You'll figure this out. But that's the whole practice is noticing what you notice. So for me, you can either stack your hands. You can have the right hand and left hand or vice versa. Figure out what you need to do to get that left knee, or excuse me, that right knee, that left knee up. See, I just messed up because I'm switching sides. So we're in high lunge on the other leg. Notice if you need to reassess that back foot, that's the thing, just get into this high lunge. If you're using your weights, go for it, but make sure you're not touching the floor with your left knee. You're literally just hovering it and your spine is directly above your hips. You're on the balls of that left foot. So you're really in the flexion of the toes. 
And the lower you go, that means that you're stronger. And it doesn't mean you have to do that today. You might have to just lower the knee a little bit today to get your hip flexors stronger. You do you. Because now, those that are in free hands, you can express your arms. You can feel that. And if you're using your weights, make sure you hold on to them equally. Good. Because on the next breath, you're going to pause. And then we're going to twist. So whether you're holding on to your weights or you slowly lower them, twisting towards that right femur bone, that right hip. Opening up your wingspan, expressing yourself. Make sure you bend that back left knee so that you can lean back. And you'll feel your flexors. If they're really tight, they will not want to <laughs> twist. You won't be able to twist, so bend your knees so you can twist. Got it. And then open up, and maybe you can reach out through the left arm, and that right hand comes back. And you could grab the back of your thigh, the butt cheek, and just give yourself a nice lengthening, lengthening through the left side, getting into the liver, gallbladder, and then also into the spleen and kidney, or yeah, those two. And then rising up, exhale, touch down onto the finger pads, step back, downward dog. Blossoming your bum is important in downward dog. So you'll notice if I press my heels to the floor and around my back, that's not down dog. So lift your heels and bend your knees and blossom your bum. It's meant to be a handstand. So eventually you want to get your head, excuse me, your hips over your head as you walk in. And then we're going to play now shoulders over wrists and so lock your feet back so that you can find your plank pose. I like to practice on my fingers to strengthen my wrists. Exhale down dog or you can plant your base knuckles down. Inhale plank. Okay, exhale down dog. So playing in the practice as many rounds as you need to. I like to go slow methodically. I'm not a person that pushes fast, uh, uses momentum when I work out ever. I watch people in the gym or in yoga and they push and they shove and they swing. Momentum is not meant to be a part of the practice. You're meant to use your force. The fulcrums and ways that you feel the resistance, so slowing it down. On your next exhalation, knees come to the mat, plant your flex your feet, open your knees, rise up, lengthen your tailbone down. It's really humid in this area. I have all my windows open, so it's like humid. And then when you're ready to lean back and press up. So you're leaning back and you're pressing up, slowing everything down. You got it. Yeah. Moving forward from this moment, I, I challenge you, I invite you for a, uh, say, 40-day challenge. Yeah, where would that bring us to? Mm -hmm. August 22nd or somewhere from, well, I don't know, what are you doing? Today, today is the day. And then exhale, heels, bum to heels. Squeeze your knees together, and then I'm going to face you once again. And then just take a moment to belly breathe. If your asana is not a practice for you sitting on your shins, then you can slip your hips to the side and cross leg or any way, or put a block between your inner ankles. You do you. So don't be a hero. You know, if you got some pain going on, that's not the way to practice. So in this belly breathing, we're gonna use the diaphragm, do two short breaths, and then, it doesn't have to be out through the mouth. So two short breaths in, and then the longest exhalation using that diaphragm. at your own pace. Slow it down, slow it down. There's no hurry. This calms and quells. Just like that. Good. Then let's transform into a lower seat. So yes, swing your hips to the right. Take your right foot into your inner left thigh and your left heel back behind you. If that doesn't work for your hip, you can take your left leg out and you can even bend that knee. So many possibilities. Yoga is meant to be a one-on-one -on -one practice, but we do it in a group for, well, financial conveniences as well. So allow yourself to sit up as tall as you can in this particular position. But let's take that left hand over to the left. Reach up through the right arm and then open up that right side body by moving your arm in circumvention. So when you're focusing on your breath, you massage your major organs. And this is spleen and stomach, right? All through that right side. 
and Hastapal. Good. And then let's slowly root that weight hand down. I do this in almost every episode in studio practice because it's wonderful. Press into both shins to lift your hips and lengthen the tailbone to your back bending. So I'm literally pressing my tailbone down and moving my pubis forward and opening up my flexors as I expand through this left shoulder in ways that will invite an opening by pressing the floor away with my right hand. Move your neck around, wiggle your jaw, make sure you're very conscious of the breath. And when you're ready to exhale and release the bum down, if it were up, sometimes you can keep it down too. Cross that left leg out in front of you. And now let's twist to the left. So take your right hand to the left knee, plug your le right left hand behind you and sit up as tall as you can and find your twist. Literally cater towards, oh, there it is. Rolling those shoulders back. Roll the shoulders back, lift your chest up, sit up as tall as you can. Your hands resist against floor or thigh or knee. Good, move your face in the opposite direction over towards the right knee, close your eyes, and wiggle your jaw around. Mm -hmm. The more you move your facial muscles and contract eccentrically, concentrically, blah, 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 the more you'll stay perhaps younger. I don't know. I'm gonna be 53 in like a month, so it does hang and I'm okay with it. Okay, left leg out in front, right knee comes up, right foot comes back behind you. Okay, if it doesn't want to go behind you because your hip flexor is like, then that leg comes out. And I might have failed to say how to lift up on that side, but I'll do this side with the leg out regardless, okay? Open up your heart, yeah? So right hands down and you're moving the left arm. So you're again, breathing spaciously into the left side of your body, which is going to trigger or move and massage the liver and the gallbladder. Oh yeah, enlarged intestines, small intestines, kidneys, everything. All your major organs are thanking you as you do this. Major causes of all diseases are gut issues and not getting full breath down there. So move your breath. When you're ready to plant that left hand on a diagonal to press up, you can keep your right leg out. It's just gonna be a bent knee to press up and lift up. Got it? So either your shin is back behind you and you can lift up or that leg is out and you can bend the knee and then lift up. So the whole idea here is to press the floor away with that left hand to open up your wingspan spaciously through the collarbone, contracting the back muscles. You can wave that right arm in any way that you want. Move your jaw, move your neck. And when you're ready to exhale the bum to the floor, we're gonna draw those knees into your chest. Big breath in and out. You may have to go wider depending on your flexibility. I'm just going to turn sideways and you can too on your mat. Sitting up as tall as you can, let's just gravitate towards leaning back. Take your hands back behind you once again. You can bend your elbows and hug your inner elbows in. You can see the bird's eye view. I see a lot of people doing this. So it's about lifting your heart, keeping your spine neutral. You can plant your hands down through the base knuckles. You can pop that chest up and find out where you need to put your bum and your feet and correspondence to being able to pick up the left leg. Yeah, so you wanna be able to keep your chest up and then pick up the right leg. So for some of you, that is enough for you. And maybe some of you can lift your feet. You wanna be able to keep, seal my neck and my, my chest is neutral. Some of you are happy to draw your hands to your knees, pop, blossom the chest, and then release your arms out. You can have your feet, knees wide apart or together. And we're gonna practice this. So release your feet once again, however you wish to do it. Literally give yourself permission to focus first on breath. So keep your inner elbows in, chest popped up. Work it so that you can lift your feet up off the floor. You can even bring your shins parallel to your knees. Maybe eventually bring your hands to your ankles. But your chest stays up, your spine stays neutral. Big piece and you're on your sacrum and a coccyx meaning you might need to be on a blanket for five, for four. So it's static, you're holding it for three, two, and then slowly release those feet, yeah. Okay, coccyx is a big thing. In your sacrum, your sacrum, the, it's a fused irregular bone that goes into a tailbone. Some of you do need a blanket. Make sure it's not like a big, big, big pillow. If you need one, then maybe a more squishy mat. This is where you can incorporate your weight with you. I'm gonna give you a little sharp shot. So I'm gonna use my kettlebell right here. And weight isn't 
what it's all about. It's about your movement. So we're going to do side twists. Okay, so we're going to count about 10, or you could do more, slowing it down. And what it looks like is you can keep your feet on the floor. I'm actually, let me start on this side. So what I'm gonna do is hold this weight, and I'm literally pressing up with my left arm. I'm pressing up with my left arm, okay? So you're on your coccyx and your sacrum. I'm gonna lift my feet and knees together, and I'm going to squeeze in together my left elbow towards my left knee and bring everything in flexion. And then open it up and twist, and then bring it in. What that looks like without a weight is sacrum. You keep your feet on the floor for beginners. You can bring your hands together like a fist, thumbs together, and you can twist, bringing your elbow, left elbow towards the floor, and then bring your left elbow towards your knee as you lift your feet up. Or keep your feet down, twist to the left, and bring it up. Twist to the left and bring it up about 10 to 12 on each side. Some of you that don't have a kettlebell, you have a similar thing, a weight. Same thing, you're literally muscling up the left side because this is my left side, up. And you're holding with both and you're bringing your knees together, okay? Once you've done your 10 or 12 on that side, sit up nice and tall, reassess your feet, feel the abdominals, the internal external obliques, the rectus abdominis and transverge. It's okay if you have belly, that's just the adipose that's on top of it. Just let it go, no judgments. So the other side, I like to use the weight sometimes and I hold it differently. As long as I can just push up, exhale, inhale is exhale when you squeeze in, inhale, twist, exhale up, inhale, twist, exhale up, inhale, twist, exhale up, like that. If you're keeping your feet down, you only go as far as you can manage to twist with your feet rooted and come back up. Equally as wonderful. So equally divide both sides with your twist and whatever weight or no weight. So nice and tall, breathe, breathe, breathe. Again, this is for your coccyx and your tailbone if you need it. Feel that enthusiasm for doing that. <sighs> Good. And then let's transform and move onto something else. So now I'm gonna extend, I'm gonna take my blanket to the back of my skull, back there eventually. Come to the very tip of your mat, extend your legs out, flex your feet towards your face, and then press to the balls of your feet, your toe pads. Sit up nice and tall and then spread your toe pads as if they're like a rainbow, like uh, for peacock feathers. And then hit that belly button. And some of you need to bend your knees because if you straighten your legs, you're, you look like that in your spine. That means you really have tight hip flexors. So I'm glad you're doing this. So bend your knees, take your arms out. And this is where you can hold a block if you want to, something light or heavy. And then broadening in the chest as you scoop the tailbone. Now you're going to scoop tail first, then lumbar spine. Bend your legs straighten for those who have bent knees. And you slowly roll yourself down. And you can pretend you're holding a beach ball, invisible beach ball, and it's windy. One vertebra at a time until you touch the bra strap area and then come back up as you squeeze your inner thighs together and press through the balls of your feet. Did you hear that? Squeeze your inner thighs together and press through the balls of your feet. And we're going to repeat that several times. So if you're bent knees, once you get your tail scooped, the legs straighten, they anchor. You roll all the way to the bra strap, keeping that neck pretty neutral. And that would be neutral, just like that. See how I'm doing that? So again, you don't have to bend your knees if you are able to sit up tall. You might lose your pants doing this one. It's like, they, they do slide. Okay, this is meant to be fun. Don't get all hung up on everything. Just have fun with it. A lot of women, you know, have had surgery uh, abdominal surgery and they say that they can't and I say you can't or you won't sorry I'm not judging this is a discernment you have other muscles in your body that need to be developed uh, say they've been atrophied they need to get back into their yeah so it's okay it's okay I know incisions suck they do cripple us for a bit but get right back up on that horse and maybe you just need to send me an email and have a conversation with me Okay, so roll out the barrels, roll out the barrels. I know what to say. Okay, a couple more at your own pace. If you want to, you prefer to hold 
for five. You could do that instead of doing a couple more for four, squeezing those inner thighs, pressing through the balls of your feet. And then eventually everyone take it all the way down onto your mat. Lovely. And then draw the knees up towards the ceiling. Anchor your sacrum down. Hug the knees into your chest. Beautiful. And then we're going to release the right foot to the mat. Externally rotate the left knee foot. Left ankle is on the right thigh. Pick up the right foot. And then you can either interlace your fingers in the shin, the knee crease, and or some of you, I've noticed in class, flexibility is not quite there yet. So you can put the strap in front of your shin. Hold the strap with your peace fingers. So that way you can actually get that quad closer because your hip flexors are tight, right? Boobies, belly, you know, extra uh, weight, adipose, it could be there, uh, you know, just love it. Just love it. Love who you are as you are. This practice is about finding, you know, yourself looking inward and say, I love you. So hug, hug, hug. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Good. You can hear my, you hear my, my washing machine in the background. <laughs> That's how organic this is. And then extend both legs up towards the sky. Shake them out. If you can't be raw, organic, and free to be you. That's a big one. That's a big conversation. So right knee externally rotates, right ankle to left thigh. Once again, you can interlace fingers at the shin or the knee crease. So that right arm goes between the thighs, flexing your feet. Back of the neck is long. I see a lot of people with their head tilted back and their backs are all around it. Shoulders down, head down, hug. We're literally getting to the deeper tissues, the piriformis, you know, uh, obturator, uh, hamstrings, all kinds of gluteal flush in this particular one. You can rotate your ankles, spread your toes. Make sure your feet and hands are active in all yoga postures, okay? Unless we're doing restore, extend your legs up, extend your arms up, give them a little shake. And then we're gonna flex the neck by lifting the head. So you're flexing the neck, that's a lot of energy. And then we're gonna reach up through the balls of your feet and your toe pads, lift the tailbone and the shoulder blades for five, four, three, two, and then release down, hug your knees into your chest. Let's do that one again. Legs up, arms up, flex the neck, look between your thighs, lift the tailbone and the shoulder blades simultaneously for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then hug in. You've got this, yeah. Let's do one more of those, legs and arms. Flexion of the neck, rise it up. Yeehaw! Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You've got it. Keep that neck in and then hug your knees to your chest. Let's end this practice with a little something on a slower note where your feet as wide as your yoga mat and this is your meditation in motion. Make sure you have space be on either side of your mat. Meditation doesn't have to be like when you go to meditate, breathe and restore. Okay. Meditation is when you're present. So we're going to open up our arms and be present, cognizant with the now moment and the breath. Arms like wings lower than the shoulders, feet as wide as the mat, closing your eyes. And I'm just going to reassess my lower back. Oh, that feels better. Back of the neck is feeling great. On your exhalation, move your knees to the left and let them hang there. Full exhalation. In breath, knees to center. Exhale, knees to right. So go at your own pace. Just focus on the task of windshield wiping your legs with breath. So in breath takes you to the center. Exhale to the side. So go into your mind's eye, the place between your eyebrows. Focus just on the movement and the breath. First the, the breath. The movement is secondary. And allow yourself to continue to do that. Just gonna do, we're going to do this for two solid minutes, so just let yourself fall into the meditation of it. The meditation in motion. Be here now with yourself. Feel your body inhaling and exhaling. Just let the body move with the breath. You are safe. You are awesome. You are magical. Thank you for slowing down today.
while you're practicing, connecting to your breath and your movement, know that everything that you do consciously with breath, it helps us emotionally to ground, to clear for clarity, to be in the moment with ourselves and to realize in the clarity, the sovereignty of what we need to meet our needs. So it deals with all emotions, depression, sadness, anger, frustration, happy, joy, elated, and addictions being your high. It grounds you. So this practice, as most yogis will say, oh, this is for headaches and this is for depression. I will compost all of that and say any yoga in a day, mindful movement and breath practices is the practice of consciousness of being here now. And it will take care of all feelings, emotions. Got it? Belly breathing is the number one practice. So keep that deep breath in and that letting go breath out. I actually did this wrong. So make sure the exhalations with the knees to the side. The in breath is knees to center. Keep it going. Maybe another round on each side. And it doesn't have to be out through the mouth. It could be out through your nose. On your next in breath, knees to center. Gravitate towards drawing your knees into your chest. Feel your lower back, apanasana. That's what this is called knees to chest. What it does is it extends the lumbar spine and you'll feel a lot of people in today, today's world have lumbar spine issues. And that's practice that we just did is perfect for everything. Cross your ankles, hold your knees, flex your neck and roll yourself up or roll to the side and pick yourself up. You choose. I like to vertically roll myself several times using less and less momentum as I get better at this and then come all the way up to sit. Once you're up and you're seated, mindfully tuck in your legs in any way that works for you. Make sure you're not always doing the habitual side, left leg out in front. Give yourself that balanced action and maybe it's the right leg on top or out in front. Dorsi flex your feet or plantar flex your feet, depending on what range of motion you have in your pelvis. If you need to sit up higher on the bolster or blocks, please do. Sitting in cross-legged is not an easy practice for most human beings. So just so you know, I'll reiterate like I do in most episodes, I'll kind of give you a little more information only because I've been, uh, there's been a request. If your hip flexors are really tight like most human beings, you may need a couple of props. Blocks that will support your femur bones and your shins, equal blocks, okay? And then unite your feet together like dorsiflex. And that may be the answer for you. Yeah. Sometimes you're sitting on a stack of blankets like this and some of you may be sitting in a chair right now because that's where you're at and that is perfect. So again, thank you for bending slowly, contracting eccentrically, concentrically. Let us bring ourselves back to the belly breathing, to deep breaths in and a exhale out. The two deep breaths just trigger that a system of like, oh yeah, the universe has got my back. And then the X, the long exhale is saying, I trust. Just like that. Mm. Again, the exhalation doesn't have to be out through the mouth. It could be out through the sinuses. This slows you down and grounds you. A couple more. Slowly bring your hands together in Anjali Mudra, and a yoga practice is not a yoga practice until we finalize it with the sound of Om Shanti Shanti. Take a deep breath in. Shanti Shanti Shanti. Slowly blinking your eyes open, open and releasing your hands. Thank you for this wonderful, fabulous start or end to your day or middle of your day. 
Keep on practicing. Send me those emails if you have any questions or concerns. I am here for you. My light's your light. I am the other you. You are the other me. Namaste.